Okay, so we were busy with calculating determinants by gas reduction. We've done a little bit of that. Now we carry on. So, da -da -da -da. then the constants begin out here. If the matrix B is obtained from A by swapping two rows of A, then the determinant of B equals minus the determinant of A. And it says for proof, we'll do it in a tutorial. Okay, so I'll leave that for you to do it in a tutorial. If two rows, now we have, if two rows of a square matrix are identical, then the determinant of that matrix is zero. It says this is a corollary of the previous fact. Let A be a matrix with two identical rows, and B be the matrix produced by swapping those two identical rows. Then the determinant of B is minus the determinant of A. Since we have swapped two rows, but the determinant of B equals the determinant of A, since so the two matrices are identical, because the two rows we swapped were the same as each other. So this implies that the determinant of A equals minus the determinant of A, which is only possible if the determinant is zero. Okay. So if you have a matrix and two rows are identical, then the determinant of the matrix is zero. Okay, another thing. If one row of a square matrix is a scalar multiple of another row, then the determinant of that matrix is zero. If one row of a square matrix is a scalar multiple of another row, then the determinant of that matrix is zero. Click do it yourself. It uses the same idea as the previous problem, but there's one additional step. A step, one additional step using fact 2.3. What's fact 2.3? Fact 2.3 is about this, how the determinant changes when you want to multiply one row by a constant. So let's check that. If one row of a scalar matrix is a scalar multiple of another row, then the determinant of that matrix is zero. Okay, so, oh, of course. So we could take a matrix, then we could, so one row is a multiple of another row. Well, we could multiply that row by the same scalar, so now the rows are identical, and the, determ and the determinant has also just been multiplied by that scalar, but then the determinant of now we have two identical rows, so the determinant is zero. So we have a scalar, the scalar times zero, which is just zero. Okay, that's easy. Now we have another one. If A, B, and C are square matrices, identical except for their pth row, and where CPJ equals APJ plus BPJ, then the determinant of C equals the determinant of A plus the determinant of B. Okay, so if square matrices are identical except for their pth row, then and that pth row, except for that pth row where CPJ equals, oh, if A, B, and C are the same as each other, except C, the pth row is a linear combination of, well, no, the pth row is a sum of the pth rows of B and A, okay? Then it says the determinant of C equals the determinant of A plus the determinant of B. And to prove that, expand along row P in C. So term to C, expand along row P, so you get CPJ and the minus, okay? But now CPJ is actually just APJ plus BPJ, okay? So you have that and that. CPJ becomes A, APJ plus BPJ, so you have these two things. But the minus are the same as for determinant of A, and for A and for B. The term, these are the minus for C, but they're the same as for A and for B. They're the same for all the matrices because the minus of the pth row, because those matrices are exactly the same as each other apart from the pth row. And the minus depend on everything except the pth row and whatever column you're in. Okay. Another one. If the matrix B is obtained from A by adding K times row P to row Q, then the determinant of B equals the determinant of A. Matrix B is obtained from A by adding K times row P to row Q, then term to B equals term to A. So remember, this is a Gauss reduction, Gauss reduction step you can do. You add a scalar multiple of one row to another. And then it says that if that happens, actually the term doesn't change, which is quite surprising. I always find that surprising. But it follows, it says, from facts 2.6 and 2.7. So what was 2.6 was that if one row of a scalar matrix is a scalar multiple of another row, then the term to that matrix is zero. And that's... If the matrices are identical except for their pth row, then CPJ equals APJ plus BPJ. Okay. The determinant of C is the determinant of A plus the determinant of B. In that case. Okay. So now we're thinking, now we're doing this, 
if matrix B is obtained from A by adding k times rho P to rho Q, then it turns to be equal to terminal base. Let's, let's, let's try and work, prove that, basically, using factors facts 2.6 and 2.7. So we have... So matrix B is the same as matrix A. Hmm. So let's actually rename this matrix to, to be to make to use to bring it back to point seven. I think it's easier if we name it, rename this matrix to C. Okay. And now we have A. So we take this matrix from A by, by adding k times rho p to rho q. Okay. So let's have an, let's introduce. So that means that C matrix C is going to be the same as matrix A, apart from rho q, right? Rho q is different. It's got k times rho p added to it. Okay. So let's make matrix. Let's make B now. B. Let's have B B. Let's have B the same as A. Except that. Except that row. Except that row Q of B is actually row P. Of A. So row B basically has two identical rows, right? Because instead of its norm, instead of the row Q that A has, it has another copy of A's row P. Okay. So now we have a situation just like fact 2.7, because we have A, B, and C being square matrices, and they're identical except for their P throw. A's P throw is just the, its normal P throw. B's, B's P throw is is A's row Q. And apart from that, it's the same. And C's, C's row Q, ah, actually, C's row Q is, as, as we have, a, and then let's have, C, if C's row Q is this, this is the sum of, the sum of A's row Q and B's row Q. But let's actually have it, let's actually change this uh, matrix B. Instead of having A being, everything being the same thing except for row Q being row P, let's have it, it's k times, let's have it being k times rho p. Okay, so rho b has, instead of its normal rho q, instead of the rho q of a, it has k times rho, k times rho p, k times its rho p. So b has two rows, rows that are scalar multiples of each other because its rho q is, a, is, a, is k times rho p. Okay, now, now let's, go, let's, have, let's apply a fact 2.7. So we have matrix A. The matrix B is exactly the same as matrix A, apart from its qth row, which is different because it's k times it's k times a pth row. So we're going to apply this fact B, but now with a Q here. Okay. So a, a B is the same as A apart from row Q, and then C is also the same as A apart from row Q. Its row Q is A's row Q plus B's row Q. And remember that B's row Q. So C's C's row Q is now A's row Q plus, plus B's row Q, okay, but B's row Q is actually K times A's row P, okay? So now we have a situation like in fact 2.8 where the matrix C is obtained from A by adding K times row P to row Q. And then it says that that means that the determinant of C will equal the determinant of A plus the determinant of B. So we have determinant of A, that's... What is the determinant of B? It should be, if this thing is going to... If we're going to have the determinant of C equal the determinant of A, we're going to need the determinant of B, this determinant of B, to be zero. Now, B has its row Q being K times row P. It has one row being a scalar multiple of another row. And in fact, 2.6 says that if that's the case, if one row is a scalar multiple of another row, then the determinant is zero. So we actually have determinant of C equals determinant of A plus zero. So determinant of C equals determinant of A. Okay. So we proved this thing. Now, it's not necessarily very clear 
but I think that this thing is very important, right? The fact that if you add a multiple of one row to another row, you don't change the determinant. That's very important. You're going to use it lots. This thing, you can use it lots, and you should remember it. This thing is not very important at all. It was mainly used to prove. It's mainly, it was, it's mainly there in this book to prove this. So there's no need to remember this fact, but you should be able to prove it if necessary. Not by remembering the proof, but by just getting good enough at things in general to figure out the proof if necessary. This one as well. You shouldn't, there's no need to remember it. This, the, this fact was used, this fact was introduced purely to help with the proof of 2.8, okay? This one as well, not, that, not so important, mainly used to prove, to prove, in fact, to prove 2.6, which is then used to prove 3.8. This one, this one's very important. Why? Because that's a gauge reduction thing, you swap two rows. It's less important than this one, because this one is just so useful, because you can, um, you can often do gauge reduction only by doing this, adding multiples of one row to another, and it doesn't change the terms at all, so it just makes things super easy. So that's super important. And these two are not so important. And don't bother remembering this. Just, just you know, try and get good enough at the other. Try and get good enough at things in general to be able to prove them if asked. But this one is important. And this one is important as well. Okay. Now, one reason. Ah, and this one. I mean, you may as well say that, that this one is important. In fact, to be honest, you don't even need to remember the diagonal thing. The lower triangular thing is not important. You never reduce matrices to lower triangular. You always reduce them to upper triangular. And notice that an upper triangular matrix, right, a diagonal matrix, sorry, actually is an upper triangular matrix. So all we need to remember for, for this one is that the term of an upper triangular is the product of its entries. And that's also a, also a thing you should be able to figure out fairly quickly by remembering that you expand down the first column each time. Um, this thing, you don't need to remember that because you can figure it out straightforwardly by expanding along that row or column of zeros. Okay. So the thing, important things are what the determinant of an upper triangular matrix is and what happens when you do each of the three possible Gauss reduction steps. When you multiply by a scalar, you multiply the determinant by a scalar. When you swapped rows, put in a minus sign, and super important, when you add a multiple of one row to another, so when you change, you know, when you change row Q to become row Q plus K times row P, then you don't change the determinant at all. And just notice also that This, this fact, if one row is a scalar multiple of another row, if you, if you assume, if you know those three rules about gas reduction, it's pretty quick to work out that this is true, okay? Because you can swap those two rows, right? You swap those two, you swap those two rows, the matrix stay the same, but the, ch same ch same ch the sign changes, it's sort of uh, the opposite of, of how we did this. To prove this one, which you don't have to remember, but if you saw if you're given a matrix with two rows, two rows being identical, it's pretty quick to if you know that when you if you already know that this the swapping thing is straightforward to prove that the term is zero. And finally, this complicated one about having these matrices where one row is a, is a one row is ident one row is where the row of C is a sum of those two rows of, of, of um, A and B. Okay. Now, is that derivable from the gas reduction things? Um, I can't, necessarily, can't think how it is necessarily. No, I don't think it is. So I mean, this fact is not very important in itself, but you should be able to prove it. You should be able to prove it, but don't memorize the proof or anything. Okay. I'm going to leave it there for now. Remember, the three things to remember are what happened. 
What happens when you gas reduce? What happens to determine when you gas reduce when you use either any of the three gas reduction steps?